I came across this video of an Islamic ritual being carried out on a uh, girl or a woman in Toronto, Canada. I watched it with great difficulty and uh, I couldn't hold back my reaction. It's a disturbing video that I'll be playing snippets from, so uh, viewer discretion is advised. Uh, there's going to be shouting, screaming, themes of demonic possessions, and so on. Um, I will conclude my commentary with a call for action, so please take this video seriously. And don't worry, I'll give you plenty of heads up before I play the video. To be explicitly clear, if you do believe in demonic possessions, uh, exorcisms, and the infamous invisible devil, uh, this video is not an attempt to change your mind. I don't have the patience to teach grown adults that there isn't a big scary monster in your closet or your head. The presumption is that you are sane and grounded in reality here with us. Um, a reality where mental illness is no longer presumed to be caused by possessions or demons or spirits. A reality where modern medicine has proven time and time again that studying chemistry and biology is the first step to treat an illness. Not some magic seeds or um, holy water or even camel urine or whatever it may be. Uh, or poetic religious mumblings. If that's not the world you live in, you're free to do your spiritual song and dance uh, up until the point where it causes harm to others around you, and boy does this one cause harm. Excuse me if I sound a little worked up about this. Uh, aside from the fact that what I'm going to show you is supposed to stir up your emotions, uh, I'm bothered because this has really hit close to home, and uh, I'm going to talk about that later in this video. Let's start with some background. The word majnoon, uh, which colloquially in Arabic means crazy, or one who's lost their mind in a sense, uh, stems from the word jinn. Jinn is an Arabic word that predates Islam, uh, that means uh, spirits that are lower than angels and can't possess people. Shaitan is the devil um, and is thought to be an unbelieving jinn. It's all a bunch of religious superstitious mumbo jumbo, but the point is that the word for crazy, uh, for mentally ill, stems from jinn possession. For thousands of years, uh, people believed that mental and neurological issues stemmed from jinn possession. Uh, we've since discovered how to uh, deal with a lot of these issues and diagnose them and treat them, yet possessions are still real to some people. Um, fortunately, hundreds of millions of Muslims and other religious people uh, still believe that. Even worse, millions will go to people like this guy to help them with their possession issues or their loved ones to get rid of the supposed evil spirits. If you believe this stuff, then I got a ruqya to sell you. Uh, what's a ruqya? Uh, it, it is sometimes synonymous with uh, exorcism, but it can be as simple as reading Quranic verses uh, and blowing air on the affected body part or person uh, to treat an illness. Last I checked, we don't have hospital wards where uh, doctors or nurses blow in people's faces uh, to, to treat them. And in the countries where this does happen, uh, I don't think they're known for excellent medical care either, but that's a tangent. The ruqya in this video is the kind done by a religious person, uh, a raqi, to a victim. Uh, the raqis sometimes paid for their services, which is presumably why this guy, uh, Salah uh, is proudly advertising his services in Toronto, Canada. That's right, not some rickety tent in the middle of the desert, but Toronto, Canada. This stuff happens every day in Muslim households and places of worship, uh, regardless of, of location, nationality, or education. Though, of course, it's more common in less educated areas. Salah shamelessly livestreamed the surqiya for all to see on TikTok. TikTok, <laughs> the same platform where Muslims mass report me uh, because they hate the facts that I relay from their own religion. But they seem to have lost where the report button is when they came across Salah because as far as I know, as, as of the time of this recording, his account is still up. Presuming that this is not some fake demonstration, the reason that this girl or woman is there is uh, not super clear from the videos. Um, Salah is stringing together this narrative that there's a jinn in her who's in love with her. Um, can't believe I'm saying this bullshit with a straight face. I'll let you hear him say it. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, this is Salah al-Din, Hijama and Rukia Services, Toronto. Um, what you witnessed is a serious exorcism. Please make dua for the sister. She has a jinni inside of her, a demon who's in love with her. 
I hope that this is a clear enough admission of his name and intentions. Uh, this is the name and face you should be reporting to the authorities. Here's a short clip from the Ruqya. Um, in my opinion, it is pretty psychologically distressing, so viewer discretion is advised. I I don't know where to even begin. I mean, we have no idea if this person consented to being there. Uh, but what he's doing is um, he blindfolded her. He's uh, muffling her, her mouth every now and then, throwing water at her or pouring it, actually. And, and, and then we notice the psychological abuse. I mean, this girl was presumably raised a Muslim, raised to believe that jinn do exist and that, that they could possess people, and then told that she has one inside her. She's in an extremely vulnerable position. I mean, imagine that everyone you love around you, people that you trust, are telling you that something is wrong with you, something superstitious is wrong with you. You might believe them. I have no earthly idea what sort of mental health issues this girl could have had before or after this kind of rhetoric and treatment. I'm sorry, I mean borderline torture. The man was reciting a verse about uh, punishing premarital sex with a hundred lashes, which leads me to believe that either she was uh, partaking in premarital sex or some sort of premarital relationship, or this wacko is referring to uh, the jinn committing zina with her. Who the fuck knows what these people think? I don't speak charlatan Rocky. If you haven't noticed, the uh, jinn speaks great English in the same accent as the Canadian girl, um, which is peculiar because a jinn in the Middle East would probably say Pebha instead of I love her. It's almost as if it's literally the person talking. It's almost as if it's easy to incept an idea into a vulnerable person's head. But uh, what do I know? I'm just an ignorant, hateful, stupid ex-Muslim who God didn't bestow the wisdom on to understand this insanity. The number of Muslims in the comments who um, wholeheartedly believed this and cheered it on is disgusting. It's horrifying. It makes me sad to discover that many of my own people are this out of touch with reality um, and downright vile in many cases. It's a shame to all Muslims who came across this and didn't do anything about it, didn't even report it and just let it happen. There were some people here and there who said this is a scam, this is not real Islam, and so on and so forth. But for the most part, I mean, the person's account is still up. This is tolerated by the Muslim community and the non-Muslim community, apparently. Let me remind you again, this happened in Canada. I mean, I'm not saying this to scare you of your Canadian Muslim neighbor. Uh, you're in no danger, but we are. This is to make you realize the struggles that 
many ex-Muslims and descendants of Muslims go through, regardless of where they are in the globe, even in secular countries. This parasitic, regressive mentality uh, piggybacks on religion, if not stems from it. Am I saying that all religious people are batch crazy? No, they're probably not. But are religious people going to do anything about this stuff stemming from their own books? Probably not. So it's not a good look. I predict that a lot of Muslims will say, well, perhaps she chose this. At which point I'd groan and realized that apologists are on a whole other planet of devoid of logic and critical thinking. Consent to harmful activities under duress or under false pretenses uh, is invalid. In this case, we have no idea if she consented or not, but I won't give it the benefit of the doubt that way. I'd rather check first. But many religions seem to have a wildly different interpretation of what consent means, so um, yeah. To clarify, in the real world, there is no jinn possessing her, so these are false pretenses. And I predict that a lot of Muslims will say, this is not real Islam. Just spare me at this point. Spare me. I will again point out that real Islam is whatever exists, is practiced, and is believed today, um, including this, by millions of believers. If you'd like to demonstrate how to uh, psychologically torture someone into believing a jinn is exiting them according to the real Islam way, be my guest. Now, I want to get to why this struck a nerve for me. Uh, if you're not aware, I was born and raised Muslim. Um, everyone in my family, and even my extended family, is educated. We do not come from an extremist background. In fact, uh, we were as moderate as an Arab diasporic uh, family in Saudi Arabia could be. And I'm telling you all this to demonstrate that this stuff could happen to anyone. This isn't just uh, for the uneducated and the ignorant. Superstitions seep into religious people's day-to-day -day lives, regardless of how smart or educated they are. Religion leaves this back door of gullibility that makes people believe harmful, nonsensical things. About a decade ago, I had a family member, a 12-year-old child, who was having some strange issues. Uh, without getting into too much detail, um, the issues were along the lines of hallucinations, uh, mumbling, and so on. Their parents were well-educated, uh, intelligent people who believe in modern medicine. They took the child to several doctors, and simultaneously they spoke to several sheikhs, and they were told by so many sheikhs that this is likely a jinn possession. Uh, mind you, these sheikhs weren't going to perform the ruqyahs themselves, so there was no monetary gain here. Uh, the sheikhs and the parents sincerely believed that this was for the good of the child. And before you say, we're told in Islam to go seek medical help at the same time, I know all that. That's exactly what happened. They did both things simultaneously because they're not full-on batch religious crazy. I witnessed several of those ruqyas. Once the child started having an episode, a male relative would uh, come to them, read Quran to them, and place their hand on the child's head. Usually the child would not take that well. I mean, a sane, irreligious person would look at that and recognize that it's because they're going through some sort of mental health episode. How happy would you be if someone invaded your personal space, uh, muffled you, started speaking over you, mumbling religious words to you, and raising their voice every time you objected? I'm, I'm sure you wouldn't like that. But, of course, to the religious eye, uh, they would see that as proof that the exorcism is working and that struggle means that the devil is exiting the body. That's how religious delusion starts to poison a healthy mind. And, of course, the more the victim struggles and acts out, the harder they're held down. Uh, people going through a mental health crisis aren't too fond of being held down, so they struggle even more. It's kind of a feedback loop that you see very often in a lot of these real, not staged, uh, exorcisms in every part of the world. As this was happening, I, I was a teenager at the time, and I was pretty confused about what to think, to be honest. I still believed in Islam, but I just couldn't believe that this child was just possessed. I mean, I spoke to the child when they were relatively calm, and I could see them believing their parents more and more as the days passed. One day they flat out told me that a jinn does come and talk to them sometimes, and I understood that the kid did hear voices later on due to their medical condition, and they attributed them to jinn because of how often they were told that by their parents. I mean, people trust their parents, usually. 
I was having a hard time believing the insanity that I was being subjected to by proxy. Uh, for example, one time I was making tea and I was pouring some uh, of the leftover hot water down the drain when I was told that uh, I should not pour boiling water down the sink drain because gin might live in dark, damp places like your sink and that might infuriate them. Regardless of whether you, dear Muslim, believe that there are jinn in your sink, it is canon, according to hadith and or sirah, that jinn are supposed to live in dark, damp places. Yet, I'm the insane one. So when I did pour the hot water down the drain, I felt immensely guilty for a while. Did I just exacerbate that child's suffering by pouring hot water down a drain? Should I be concerned about all dark, damp places and all drains? I mean... Give it to me straight, you know, are there monsters in the dark or are there not? After going through several traumatizing displays of religious psychological torture, the child was finally diagnosed and treated by a doctor. It seemed that uh, the medicine developed mostly by kuffar and manufactured mostly by kuffar did the trick, not God's magic words. I was so indoctrinated that even this didn't lead me to question at the time. Um, I understand why intelligent, educated, everyday Muslims lap this stuff up or simply choose not to think too hard about it. I mean, I've been there. I just put the confusion aside. I locked away all these memories for a long, long time. But seeing this happen in a country where I thought people were safe from religious superstition made me feel extremely defeated. It feels like religion will always have a grasp on people's minds and it feels like the religious exceptions given to them uh, enable this kind of barbarity. I mean, I expect every Canadian watching this to report it to the authorities. Please go do so right now. It shouldn't be too hard to identify this man since he advertises his own services everywhere and his face and his name. So please, if you know this man or know anyone who's been to this man or know this girl, please speak up. I really hope that she gets the help that she desperately, obviously needs. I hope that her parents or whoever else is involved in this uh, face some consequences or are held accountable for their actions. And I hope that we all push back on this kind of quackery and, and don't tolerate it anymore. Actually, I just learned that according to this Redditor who did report it to the Toronto police, I presume, uh, they were visited by the police and they took a look at it and they ruled it as, um, hear this, religious freedom. <laughs> Yay, religious tolerance. You let kids believe in the tooth fairy and what do you lose? Nothing. A tooth, maybe a dollar. You let kids and adults believe this nonsense? Um religion with all of its harmful beliefs and you walk on eggshells around it to the point that the cops saw this video and thought there's no reason to investigate really um it's just religious freedom now this happened very recently and i'm not sure how, about the legality of this or how final the verdict is by the toronto police um so i urge you to make us think about this Share this, reach out to your local representatives, law enforcement, again and again, whatever you gotta do. Though I have no idea what the age of this girl or woman is, keep in mind that a lot of parents volunteer their children to do this, so it would be a shame if this is happening to Canadian children under the authorities' own nose in Canada. I simply cannot accept that someone is tormented on camera in Canada, consensually or not, and it is just shrugged off as religious freedom. And if this is what happens um, on full display to the rest of the world, legally, Islamically, can you imagine what happens behind closed doors? Can you imagine the even worse mutations of these practices that so many not real Muslims partake in all the time? This is not an isolated incident. This happens extremely frequently, especially in Muslim countries, and as you can tell, most of the time the people in this are not truly fully consenting with their sane whole mind present, especially not when they're kids. Nobody seems to do anything physically about this, except raising awareness, which is what I'm trying to do here. It is so heartbreaking to see this happen and feel so different from my own community so alienated. I mean, it feels like the religious are insane and the irreligious are too scared to call it out 
out of fear of being labeled intolerant or something. Apostates like myself, we often feel untethered and alone. I've had to carry this experience with me for over a decade and not share it with people, only to see it being broadcasted and given the green light under the premise of religious tolerance. I'm not going to stand by and watch this happen. And neither should you. I urge you to pester the authorities, contact them again and again till this issue is resolved. I hope that this girl gets the help that she needs. I hope this man is stopped and everyone like him is stopped from doing this in the future. And for humanity's sake, for humanity's sake, think critically, think for yourself. I love So you're taking the right direction, you're going to be okay. Just just continue with Rukia Allah, believe me, inshallah, we'll the story. What? You, you, you're done. Session's over, you understand? Session's over. 
No more. I don't hear anything out of you. I love her. So calm her down, calm her down, speak to her, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mrs. Salah al-Din, Hijama and Rukia Services Toronto. Um, what you witnessed is a serious exorcism. Please make dua for the sister. She has a jinni inside of her, a demon who's in love with her. Okay, and we're, we're grinding them out. We're doing the Rukia. Okay, the Islamic Rukia. Thank you all for joining. If you